Hey YouTube, today I'm going to show you how I recreated this here, this L system alien pattern thing. Um, it was one of my examples, but I'm going to show you how I did it anyway. It's quite simple. Um, the code is pretty much harder than anything else, than the network tree anyway, but it's only 85 lines of code. So I'll run you through it all very quickly. So this here is pretty much just a basic setup and it will recreate patterns like this. You can change the angle, but I've, I'm just going to leave that for now and jump straight into the nodes. So to begin with, let's go to my first point here. All I'm doing is I'm creating one point to start with and I'm sticking that into a group called L drivers. And here I've got two empty groups, one called R drivers and one called places. Now to explain the name of the groups, how I've named this is you got the point here in the origin, let's zoom in a bit. So what this will do is as the solve goes through, it will go forward along this line here and then it will jump and start going to another, like another direction. So my L drivers is all the points that are going in the left direction, that are constantly moving forward and then going left, 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 left. Same with the R drivers, they're the ones that are going right, right, right. And the places are the, just the points that are going to be sitting still and the L drivers and the R drivers are going to be dropping places before they move to their new position. So simple enough and it's only left and right so my point only splits into two it doesn't split into three or four as I guess that would be pretty cool as well but I just started off with splitting two ways for this first example. So next um, so next I've merged this all together, so I've got my groups and I've got a attribute create. So if I show you what I've made here, I've got four attributes. My first one is delay, so they're going to be traveling in a direction and the delay will count down and when the delay hits zero, they will shift and start going in a new direction. So that's the corners you see. So if I play it, you can see here it's going forward and then when the delay hits zero, it starts going left and it will spawn a right placer at the same time. So the next one is angle. This pretty much is the angle of attack here. So this is pretty small angle here. It's only changing about uh, 20 degrees. Yep. And then down here we have direction. So this one's just a vector. It's the direction of the point that's, you know, the direction it's going in. And last but not least, set up and this is just I want it to be a boolean but they don't have booleans so it's just an integer and I like to use this variable to say you know if it's zero um, kind of says that the point is brand new and it sets itself to zero and then I can do a, a pre setup and then set the setup value to one so it'll just you know it'll just run once which is cool and then lastly we have the solver you can see I've got a basic switch, which is just, you know, for the first frame, go through the normal input, and then for the rest of the frames, go through the previous. And then we've got the point wrangle here, attribute wrangle. And I'm just using the, so in here, all the groups, all three groups will come in, but I just want to run this code on the drivers, so the, the points that are going to be moving. The places don't really, they don't need to go through here because they just get put down and dropped and that's it. Um, I think that's everything. The name, they're called drivers because they're driving forward and dropping places. Cool, so I will show you this code but I'll show you in Sublime because I prefer, <laughs> prefer the color scheme and I prefer just using Sublime in general. So this was like 300 lines of code, but I realized, you know, I can't show you 300 lines of mess. I need to tidy it up for you. So I did. So I always break my code down into sections. So I've got my functions, I've got my variables, and I've got my main, which is pretty much the base code that goes through. So I won't teach you VEX. I will just run through my code and then I'll give you a link in the description of the final code here. So switch point group so this function here it will take a point it will take the old group and the new group so pretty much you know it's changing which group this point belongs to 
and I was just wrapping this up in a function. Um, create point. So this takes a position and a group name. And what this will do is it'll make a point and then it'll stick in that group for me and then return it. So it was just to wrap up, you know, just nice and simple create point function there. And then last here, we've got drop point and move. So what this will do is one of the drivers will drop a point down and then it will move forward. So here is my position attribute. So pretty much the position of the driver, the drop group. So the group that I'm dropping it into, which is most likely the placer every time. And then the new position. So it also moves the point that I'm giving it. So by giving it the position attribute, I can use that value to make the placer point, but then use that value again to set up the new position after that's done. So that's that. I could have set some, like, broke this down into more functions, but I didn't want to at the time. So here's my three basic variables here. Let me go into the scene and quickly show you what they do. Although I've tried to keep the naming as nice as possible for you. So I go back to my scene. Variables here. So this this system is not perfect, and I'll explain why. So if I set my favorite angle is, well, my favorite default angle is 45 degrees. Get this nice shape, which grows like this. I don't know if you've ever been at school or college and you've been drawing this in your book. Get a nice shape like that. Now here I've got neighbor threshold. So what this one will do, I'll explain the delay in a minute. So neighbor threshold is every time a point moves, it checks its current location and its future location and where it's moving to for another point. And if there's another point in any of those locations, it will stop and it will convert the driver into a placer. So you can see here, if I go forward a bit more. So you see here, these are definitely going to clash and I don't want them to keep spiraling out of control and ruining my pattern. So keep going forward they should so roughly now they've detected that they've got they're going to collide so they're going to be switched based on the neighbor threshold you can see you get the lovely pattern now the reason you have to change this is if I wanted a let's go back to the beginning so normally I set my default to 99 which is a nice value and then I can mess around with the angle here so say 72 degrees and then this will grow forward and I get some really 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 funky patterns it's cool now the problem is with this threshold is more for the small angles are become a problem so if I do let's go let's start at 30 I'll grow 30 yep that was nice enough now if I go to 25 You can see that it's just stopped because it's because the angle is quite small and very fine. The threshold is breaking it a bit, so that's this is when you have to lower the threshold. So what it will do is, as you know, as they divide, the angle will be smaller, so they're more likely to be closer together. But you have to watch out because the lower you make this threshold, the more likely it will go through the gaps and mess up your pattern. So that, that didn't go too bad, actually. That was quite nice. I guess a way around this would be to, you know, when a, just have the opening 100 frames of the sim, just disregard this threshold whatsoever so it can start drawing. And then once it started to spread out, it could then begin the threshold. But this works for now, for what I need. I don't know actually how low I can get this. Let's try 15. Yep, so now my threshold is too high again. Two nine. There you go, that's nice. Now this probably gives me the problem though. Yes, yeah, so you can see here, because the threshold is now too low, it's gonna let points slip through the gaps. But it's it's literally all a matter of just tinking with the variables to get it through. So I'll go back to thirty two and I'll go back to nine nine cool and split delay here 
is how long the line will wait before it will split up into the next. So if I go back to the beginning. So it will draw 10 and then it will split and then it will draw 10 and then split. So that's the split delay. Cool. So there's that's the main controls of using this system. So if I go back to the code. Goodbye. Awesome. So you've seen the variable controls. I could turn this into a, a node in Houdini with controls, but I've just put it all in one place for now. Functions, variables. Okay, so I'll run through the main. So what I'm saying here is, so when it starts up, if the setup is less than one, so if the setup is zero, I'm going to set it to one, but now I've got my chance to do some quick setup. So this is pretty much for the beginning points here. Um, I'm setting my delay to my split delay, and I'm setting up my original direction, which is in the Z here. Now, I could, farewell, in the attribute create here, I could set the default for the split delay in there, instead of going in here and doing this. But then, I then have two places that I have to change variables. So I'd, I'm just doing it here instead, you know, leaving all the attribute create set to zero and doing everything inside this script. So it's all in one place for me. Now I'm I'm not a master, there's maybe a better way to do this, but this is just how I've done it for now. So I'm using this setup attribute as a beginning, kind of like a boolean saying, is the point has the point been set up yet? No. Okay, run this quick thing. Cool. So this next bit of code here, I'm just grabbing the group. I'm kind of saying, you know, tell me what is the current group of this point and the opposing group. So if it's a left driver, the opposing will be right vice versa. And in here I'm saying, so I kind of have to go back a bit to show you this. Let it grow. Cool. So first off I'm saying current neighbors for each for the point. So I'm saying at this point's position within the neighbor threshold that I said above which is 0.59 in this one. But I prefer to leave it at 45 and 99. That's my default. So here I'm saying, are there any current neighbors? So am I, is this point on top of any other points? If it is, stop. Because that means it's collided with the pattern and I want it to stop. I don't want that specific driver to keep going. And well, because the current neighbors will pick up itself by default, I'm doing minus one. And if it picks it up, I just want to switch the point current point here from its current group to places and then return will stop this code from going any further. So that's nice there. And then the last bit of code we have here. So the new position will be my current position plus my direction vector. I guess you could add a magnitude here to increase this or a speed but but for now I'm just moving along with this. So here I got if delay so this is pretty much going along and if the delay is hit zero split and if it's not, well, it, it will just keep going. But So in here, if it's hit zero, I want to reset the split delay back up to 10. And then I'll get the adjacent angle. So when the point gets to here, it's going to split. And it's going to have its angle. And it's going to have the adjacent angle. So what I've done is my variable up here is in degrees because I prefer 1 to, or 0 is 360 rather than 1 to 6.2 something. <laughs> Crazy number. So I'm just converting that to radians here, but my F angle is in radians because I don't need to view that much. So that's cool. So what it was to do is it will be my, my current angle, so which is this way, minus the angle change, which will give me the adjacent angle, and then plus the angle change, which will give me this angle here. So I'm kind of saying, you know, the angle and the adjacent angle. And then next I've got my direction vector, and I'm updating that with my new angle here. And you can see here, I'm using sine and cos to convert my angle into a 2D direction based on a circle. I mean, it's not 3D. It could be 3D in future, but it's not. So now my new position will be the current position plus the new direction that I've got. Now, just before I go into the adjacent direction, the first thing I'm doing is I'm looking at future neighbors. So the point I'm going to be moving to, is there any points there already? And if there is, then I'm going to clash again. 
So if, if I'm going to clash, then I, again, I want to drop this driver into the places group and stop. However, if it's free to keep going, I will then create my adjacent direction, which is pretty much exactly the same as this one here, but it's the direction going the other way. So now my point has its direction, but it has the adjacent direction. And I have the position here, which is going to be the new position, but also I've made the position of the point going the other way, so I can then spawn that one. And then right down here, I'm saying the new adjacent point, so I'm creating the new point here into that group. And then I'm immediately setting these attributes here, so I'm saying angle is the adjacent angle, so I'm telling it to go off in the adjacent direction. I'm giving it the direction ready, so it can go off in that direction. So then the delay here, I'm setting up as the split delay, minus one, because when it goes through the code, it always removes one from the delay. So if I minus one there, I'm kind of setting up this new point ready as if it's just gone through a cycle of a current point like this. And then last but not least, my setup attribute, I'm setting to one. So as you can see up here, my first new points, they will go through the setup and they'll get a new delay, a new direction, everything. But these points here that I'm making, I've already given them the information that I want to get them going to set them up. So they've already been set up. So I'm saying setup is one. It's already been set up. And finally, if it's not returned and broken out because it's found a neighbor or a future neighbor, then drop point and move. So drop a new point where I am and keep going. So if I go in, just show you one last time what that gives me so if i show you guys one more run as a kind of closing demonstration so i'm going to do 60 61 degrees it's a random value i click play and i get this lovely shape i could sit here for ages just watching these it's really nice it's like a beehive <laughs> And there we have it. I hope that tutorial has helped you. If um, if you have any questions, just give me a shout and I'll try and help you if I can. Thanks for watching.